What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel. We're online at www.whatsupinthesky.com. This is from the Washington Post. A little space news for you. It's been a while since I've done some space news. I'm going to get back to it. Finally get the, the pools done. A whole bunch of stuff's done here around the house. I had to get summarized. And summers uh, should be here shortly. But check this out. I knew this was coming, guys. I've been telling you for months. Uh, this is how they're going to slowly phase out our rover and our new pictures too bad there's no triple a on mars at the curiosity rovers bases equipment problems oh equipment trouble all right you guys come go ahead and read it to you some of this when the curiosity rover set out last july on its much anticipated drive to mars missions ultimate destination a three mile high science prize called mount sharp Everyone knew that the going might get rough. The terrain ahead was more rugged than anything experienced before, and the winter nighttime temperatures regularly plunged to 120 degrees below zero. Keeping all the sophisticated equipment on board safe while guiding the one-ton rover rises and through the sand dunes will be an unprecedented challenge. They should let me drive this thing. I can get that. I, I can drive it. <laughs> Though it was only a six-mile road trip, the team leader predicted it might take as long as a year to finish. Mars, however, has other plans for the rover, and they weren't cordial. The allotted year is almost over, and Curious is a bit half, only halfway to Mount Sharp. And of course, a lot of us know why it's only halfway to uh, to Mount Sharp. It's been doing a lot of stopping. Now, it's, I don't think it's stopping just to take a look at these wheels. They take, they have a camera that takes. I mean, if you look at the pictures, there's millions of pictures of these wheels. Mount Sharp is unlike anything extraterrestrial ever explored. Of course not. It's it's a huge. Uh, it's a huge base. There's all sorts of uh, old. I mean, it looks just like Giza. You know, it's going to be amazing if we could actually drive the rover up the the thing. But that's not going to happen now. All right. There's okay. The rocks and minerals there will tell us so much about the geological history of the region. And there's maybe more of the globe, says Curiosity geologist Ralph Milken of Brown University. Given the scientific treasures known to the be the present, the base of Mount Sharp is often described as the Curiosity team is the promised land i think that's where uh, I, I know that's where i want to go because that's where that one that looks like a road goes up and then splits off one going to the right into this city looking thing and one that goes up along this wall that's just amazing looking the delay in getting to mount sharp is a largely a result of one worrisome and time consuming problem damage to the rover's wheels from their contact with sharp martian rocks embedded in the underlying sandstone some gradual deterioration had been anticipated but the punctures and the tears that began showing up late last year, well, you know, what had happened to the wheels was not a really big surprise to the team, and not a good one. Oh, it was a really big surprise to the team, and not a good one, said Curiosity Project Manager James Erickson. We had done extensive testing on those wheels, but we didn't do testing on extremely sharp and pointy rocks embedded into the ground. But it turns out that Mars has many of them. Oh, you didn't realize that in the last two rovers you guys sent. Fire that guy. Why, you know, fire him. Get rid of him. Whoever designed the wheels, get rid of him. I'm so tired. It's so hard to lose your job in, in the government. I mean, you almost, like, got to not want to work sometimes to work for the government. All right, here we go. Project scientist John Gratzinger said that the wheel issue quickly became an epic scale problem for the mission. It's a little like being told you're critically ill. You don't know how much longer you have, but you know it will be a rough road. Yeah, right. The rover had been on Mars for roughly 400 sols when images of the, de of the wheels began to reveal some wear, according to the deputy project scientist Ashwin Vasada. That was five months ago when the Curiosity left Yellowknife Bay, where a low-lying area of the Gale Crater yielded the mission's greatest finding so far that long ago conditions of the once watery site had been conductive to the existence of life. Made of milled aluminum, each wheel has milled aluminum? That's what they made these things of, milled aluminum. Okay, geniuses. Each wheel has raised and reinforced treads that support a tire, which is only <laughs> not even a half of an inch thick. These are the first wheels of their kind to be used on Mars, designed to be light and flexible enough for the vehicle to land on them and to have traction needed to climb out sharp. Oh, but we're not even going to get there, apparently, now. As the days went on, we saw we were alarmed. Not alarming in the sense that the wheels were in serious damage, but alarming that the rate of deterioration appeared to be picking up. The first priority was to stop the damage, and that meant parking the rover. It set for two weeks in the dead of the Martian winter as the team worked feverishly to understand the two problems. 
which terrains were tearing up the wheels, and how could these damaging areas be avoided? Finding answers required long hours of matching landscape pictures taken earlier by Curiosity with images of the wheels taken around the same time. Images from the or up oh, oh, this is great from High Rise. Camera were also blown up to their maximum to identify rocks along the path to get overviews to help identify areas that appeared problematic. That high rise is so amazing, some of the pictures that come from it. And they we still don't look see, this is telling you how they can actually, you know, I mean, the rover's no big than a little buggy, you know. They can blow up to the size of a rock, you know, one little rock sitting on there from a satellite. And we don't get that resolution from them. Even from high rise, we don't get that good resolution. So the six wheels of Curiosity Double were given similar damage and it was put through the paces on the Mars yard, a simulated Martian landscape at the lab. Gradually, the team leaders became convinced it was safe to resume driving. The drives were short. 10 to 13, 30 meters that began to change only permission when the granite drive the vehicle backward and maneuvered the limits wear and tear on the most damaged middle and front wheels. But it was awkward way to travel. Most of the cameras the Curiosity drivers had used to plot their path are on the front of the rover. So there was only limited camera coverage for what the show lay ahead when driving backwards. Only recently, the wheel problem has been deemed manageable, through, <laughs> though with a significant change in how to traverse the upcoming climb to Mount Sharp would proceed. We'll be driving on sand whenever we can and avoiding the bedrock. The wheels, in no doubt, continue to take some damage, but we know much better now to limit that. As a welcome sign of the return to normal, the rover is in autonomous, this is according to autonomous navigation in late May for the first time since the wheel problem arose. The autonomous program, which is the ability to independently identify risks and avoid them, allows the rover to drive farther, and then the rover drivers initially program for the day. But the rover is still generally being driven in reverse, and that the autonav works only when the rover is going forward. That means that day's drive usually includes a U-turn after the driver control part of the track is finished, and the autonav takes over. So basically, they're still putting wear and tear on the front wheels. Despite the progress, the wheel drama was a sobering reminder that NASA officials often put it, Mars is hard. And so should the guy who designed aluminum wheels and sent it to Mars with a little itty-bitty tire attached to it. The uh, expedition that had been highly productive and relatedly problem free for more than a year suddenly had a threatening and seemingly worsening problem. All during the Yellowknife campaign, there had been voices calling for a speedier wrap-up to traverse the Mount Sharp could begin. The scientists didn't dispute the value of what was being investigated and discovered, but they did worry about the rigors of working on Mars could have an unexpected consequences on the rover, and so it would be better to head for the main target as soon as possible on Mars. Time always equals risk. But the discoveries kept coming, so the planned short detour to the Yellowknife area lasted more than eight months. And you know, why did it Why did it last that long? I mean, it, it's amazing how we're getting some of these same pictures back. So, Mount Sharp, studying Mount Sharp is a key goal of the expedition, but Curiosity is also officially on the mission of discovery that allows for detours. While the wheel drama has dominated the traverse, Curiosity has continued to return some exciting results. The team, for instance, found evidence for a long time ago present of water across the now parched landscape. And the Curiosity team science papers presented the spring report that the strongest evidence yet that the Martian surface holds simple carbon-based organic core compounds, the building blocks of life that have so far eluded clear detection. Eluded <laughs> building blocks of life that have actually eluded. Uh, all you gotta do is watch these pictures. Curiosity is now in full drive mode again. He was unable to predict when the rover might reach Mount Sharp, but he did say that nuclear general power the rover will probably wear out before the wheels do, and neither would happen for quite a few years. This was a huge bonding experience for the mission. Success is always great, but there's nothing like impending doom to bring people together. Now we can say we licked that one. Okay, so they're saying they've taken care of the wheels that seem to be falling apart. Um, Watch for more and more trouble as these every as we get closer and closer to Mount Sharp, and we keep finding these amazing discoveries. And all of us are finding them, at least the guys who are actually looking for it. And when we ask, anytime you ask NASA, well, well, what's this rock or what's that rock? We do not comment on specific things that we see. So I thought you guys might like that. I'll leave it to the Washington Post. Uh, I'll put that link in here. NASA didn't have too much about it on there recently. If you check their website out, I always love to check their website just to see what's going on in the news. Um, 
that has got a good picture up there. NASA image of the day, all that good stuff. So, what's up in the sky news for you today? www.whatsupinthesky.com. Come join us over there and uh, say hello on the new forum. I'm almost up to uh, 10,000 subscribers on Facebook. Once I hit it, I think I got another 120 to go. I'm going to give away that Lego Curiosity rover. You guys have a wonderful day. Peace.